Hi guys, my name is Rachel. I chose to read Soul Surfer by Bethany Hamilton because I think it's a very inspirational story and something I've always loved to watch. To be honest, I never wanted to write a book. It actually took a lot of convincing by my family and friends because I'm not someone who likes to talk about myself or thinks I'm any big deal. But they saw something in my story that would be helpful and interesting to others and they encouraged me to write it down. So here I am. <clears throat> And actually, when I really thought about it, it seemed like something I should do. It would give a bigger picture of my faith, my family, and all those people who have helped me get back into the water again. But I'll tell you one thing, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of people to help me put thoughts on paper. First there was Rick Bunchik, my spiritual advisor, and a pastor in the Kauai Christian Fellowship Church. There were certain things I just didn't want to talk about, certainly not to a stranger. So Rick volunteered to do the translating. We would sit for hours and just talk, talk, talk. I'd pour my heart out and he'd patiently listen. Then came our writer, Cheryl Burke, who helped me organize and shape all these thoughts into 15 chapters. Who knew I had 200 plus pages in me? When you really when you're really close to something, it's hard to see things as they truly were or are. So Cheryl, along with my editor, Lauren McKenna, helped me connect the dots. They asked the toughest questions, <clears throat> stuff that really made me squirm sometimes, but also in the end made me dig a little deeper and really be honest with myself and you. In the end, I'm really proud of how of what we've written here. I think it's <clears throat> truthful and I hope it inspires and motivates people to tackle any obstacles in their lives. I hope it helps people find faith in God and in their own strength and ability. I hope it <clears throat> motivates someone going through a tough time right now to keep on fighting until they rise above it. You can and will get through it. I'm living proof and there's and when there's a will there's a way. What you don't want is for people to pity me or think of me as a person who had their life ruined. That's not how I see it. My mom is always saying, if life hands you lemons, make lemonade. <clears throat> Which is a great outlook on life. If you can actually see beyond the lemons when you're up to your eyeballs in them. My strength caused my family, I'm sorry, my strength caused my relationship with Christ from the love and encouragement of my family and friends. In a lot of ways, I'm like any 14 year old girl and in a lot of ways I'm not. If someone had told me this is how my life would be, I would never believe it. I would have seemed too bizarre to be true. Sometimes it still is. I often dream that I have both my arms again and I wake up expecting the whole shark business to be a nightmare, but it's not. It is my reality now and I've learned to accept it. I've moved on. I don't pretend I have all the answers to why bad things happen to people, but I do know that God knows all the answers and sometimes he lets you know in this life and sometimes he asks you to wait so that you can have a face-to-face -face talk about it. <clears throat> what I do know is that I want to use what happened to me as an opportunity to tell people God is worth worthy of our trust and to show them that you can go through and don't want, and do wonderful things in spite of terrible events that happen. I don't think it does any good to sit around feeling sorry for yourself. I made myself a promise. I'm not going to wallow or walk around moaning, woe is me. One other thing you should know about me, this book doesn't really have an ending yet because I'm still learning how to cope every day. I'm not talking about learning how to button up my top with one hand. I'm talking about coping with being a celebrity, something I've never imagined that I would, be, that I would have to deal with, with at the age of 14. Or coping with people's stares, either because they recognize me or because they're not used to seeing a person with one arm running down the beach. Or coping with the ans answering endless questions from the media and seeing my face in newspapers and magazines. I'm also learning to cope with the frustration of knowing that I had both hands to paddle and just might not have done a little and I just might have done a little better in the surface competition I'd just been in. I'm excited about some of the opportunities to travel and surf all around the world that have come to me as that have come as a result of my attack and return to surfing. But most of all, I'm excited about what the future holds. Will I make it will I make it to the pro ranks in surfing? 
Will my lifelong friends and surf buddy Elena be paddling next to me in the years to come as she is now and was during the attack? Will I be able to make a difference in some small way in people's lives by sharing my story? What does God have in store for me? I really don't know, but I do know one thing for sure. The adventure has only started.